Yeah, okay. but okay. Okay, go on, Marty, and I'll go afterwards. Yeah, uh, hopefully you guys can hear me um, clearly now. I had the auto mic gain off for some reason. Um, hopefully this is better. Um, yeah, yeah, you're good. Okay. Um, how you doing, Courtney? Hi. We've been on the panel before, um, and I know this is about a lot of stuff that you said, but you know I got some smoke for you. But it's not just about you, so please, you know, just don't get offended. But honestly, what I'm hearing, because I've been listening for a while, and coming from a male perspective is the arrogance of you. To say um, stab, I think that's the acronym. Um, steal them back. I don't know the, 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 the letters, whatever. But to, to, you have to really understand the full scope of what's going on today. One, the millennials don't have the history of the 90s, even the early 2000s, because they were just being born. So the guilt trip and, and the shaming tactics, and this is your community. There's no loyalty in, in, in terms of that. And in terms of, I'm hearing a lot of, you know, there are good black women here, just come back and find out, you know, like we're going to a new land or something. Like this word to rediscover in America. That's not, it doesn't make sense. And I'm gonna tell you why, because the guys who have already left have already experienced what you're trying to recreate here. That's almost equivalent to dropping a nuclear bomb on New York City and then everything's obliterated, but you're still rallying the troops. We can still do it. You have to understand where things are right now to understand where you have to do to, to get to where you gotta go. And just to break it down simply, cause I don't wanna take up too much time. What has been done was a slow process. Let's just say over 50 years, just to make it simple. So what it really takes is not wife school. It is not coaching. There's no amount of coaching that can bring some of these lovely ladies back to the reality to you know where they wanna be and get married. What it's going to take it's going to take so much repair on your end physically, mentally, socially, because we, we know black women are the number one consumers of social media. And that's the main key component where you embarrass yourself, namely Kevin Samuels for two years straight. And we've seen this in real time. So there's no debate about this moving forward. What's going to have to happen? You're gonna to have to rebuild everything so much so that other men are going to have to want to marry you. Now, just think about what I said for a second, what it would take for other men to, now I'm not going to say you're going to marry them. I'm just saying it has to look enticing enough for other men of other cultures to want to come in to marry you at that apex hor event horizon. Then you might see a, a shift, you know, because one, you're going to have to get the fitness. We already know this. You're going to have to get the attitude, the expenditure. And at the same time, you're going to have to lobby to get these laws changed. Because you can't have it both ways or say, hey, come back, come back. But these laws, they can stay where they are. So we're still going to have this trap door set up. So if you walk through it and you, and you don't pay attention to what we want, we can still walk you through that trap door. So if you're not going to, uh, on all fronts, attack this and really be military minded about this, because I'm going to tell you something. These women overseas, they watch you. And you know they watch you because every five seconds, you guys are saying, oh, these, these women are trying to look like us, trying to be like us. Here's the thing. They will take the greatest parts of you and accentuate all the things you don't do. So when we when we say the greatest parts, for some reason, we uh, a lot of black women think they have a patent on bodies. Um, no, because if you've traveled anywhere in the world, you would understand that Brazil, Argentina, Colombia. I mean, we can just rattle off a list of women throughout the world who, at, in a cultural sense, um, put fitness apex because the women compete for the men everywhere in the non-Western world. This is like a way of life. So for some reason, Black women think they have the patent on these things. Um, so basically what I'm trying to say, you're going to have to get the, the body aspect together the attitude aspect together and just being able to have conversations that don't include love and hip hop and what the latest rapper got arrested for. I mean, it's really going to have to elevate to a point. And see, the thing is, a lot of you women can't even get on this panel to talk to another woman and have some decorum about yourself. You're coming in here brooding like you're throwing bows. It's crazy. And you don't understand people are watching you. 
And they're, and they're just basically, see, the best way to get a black man is to do the opposite of what the black woman does. Whatever it is. She's loud, be quiet. She's non-submissive, be submissive. She doesn't cook, you cook. It, literally, the playbook is so easy. And what, what it's going to have to take, like I said, it this is this is not going to happen overnight. So when mm -hmm. Jessica X is telling Courtney and other ladies like her, like, listen, you want 10,000 guys to come back and fight over what, 10 women? That, that is not a winning strategy. And you have to understand on the male perspective, why? And I'm going to tell you, I travel, you know, throughout the world. And I'm telling you, you know, and, and you can no longer say, because a lot, of, a lot of times the excuse used to be, oh, you don't get women, you're lame, you must be an incel, you must have some social awkwardness. Mm -hmm. I think Austin Holloman proved that it's not just about being socially awkward. You have a guy who, in a general sense, would be considered handsome by you ladies, I'm sure. And he's saying the same exact thing the person you would consider an EL, an educated lame, would say. So what does that tell you? That means no matter if you go to East to West Coast, the same game is the same game. And the thing about it is, men, we, we tend to adapt to things and we tend to find a cheat code. So the cheat code right now, and not everybody can do this because it does cost money to actually travel the world and stay there. It is not easy. That's why a lot of people don't do it. But the when people start to understand what's possible, that is the major threat. So black women, you got to understand, you have a major threat on your hands. And the and having this idea of arrogance, like we're just going to come to you like a homing beacon in the night is not going to happen. Because why? You have interracial women in the U.S., in the gym, because they understand what your black man looks for just on a physical level. They've already grown up in a functioning patriarchy. So they already understand on the mental level what to do. So it's basically like, what's the difference between buying a car fully assembled and then buying one that's in shambles and pieces that you got to put together that you hope can work over the long haul? What would you do? You know what I'm saying? I'm just trying to break it down in, in, in ways women can understand because what I hear on this panel, it's a lot of arrogance. Um, Platinum Elite says, most black men are not leaving America for women abroad. Why care about men who don't want you? And it's it's not even a bigger percentage of men who are leaving, you know? Right. It's always going to be a small amount for for the most part. I agree. the ones that you want. That's the point. And that's the point of what I'm doing. He's absolutely correct. That's why I, I'm confused at all this. Because, Marty, what you said, I agree with. I totally agree with what black women have to do. You get no pushback from me. Now, if I'm coming across arrogant, you know, I definitely don't want to come across that because, you know, in this journey that I'm on, I, I have been humbled so much. The, the part that, I, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but the part, just to be clear, that comes off arrogant is the action you want to happen right now. I'm not saying you're not right, but you're just not right now. You're not going to get the guys who are currently experiencing utopia. And I'm not saying it in the way where you travel overseas even everything's perfect. That's not what I'm saying. However, what I'm saying on a balance of probability, 99.9% .9 of interaction with females in general abroad are positive. There's, yeah. there's, there's, there's no games. She comes fit. She comes ready to clean. And make no mistake about it. And when you say things like this to the average, and I know you women up here are not average, so I'm not talking to you. When you say these things to the average black woman, she equates these things to slavery. Um, somehow you're controlling and not understanding this is how we interact. Because if I'm supposed to die for you, I want my dishes washed as a consolation prize. Yes, I would like not to say that I can't iron my own clothes, but if you see me multitasking, yo, handle that. If I'm if I'm tasked with the um, responsibility of making a hundred k or more as per Kevin Samuels the last two years before he passed, right? Everybody from ugly to pretty, 
this is I want a top tier man. So you guys set the the baseline benchmark of 100k, six feet tall, and whatever you else you want to rattle off, personality, smile, all that goofy shit. That's cool. And nobody bats an eye. So when the men um, post Kevin Samuels, because he was your buffer. Let's be clear. Let make no mistake about it. He was your biggest buffer. Now the hounds are loose, and they all have blue books. If you know what I mean. Excuse so, me, sir. Sir, go ahead. If I'm, if I may, you're absolutely right. And shout out to my uh, late high school, college, and fellow Oklahoman Kevin Samuels. Um, you're absolutely right because when he was talking about those things in college, we like the hell, the hell you say. I'm not cooking for nobody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the and hell see, you say. And see but the he thing, was right. Yeah. And I had to come oh, back and tell him that I? he was. And see the thing can is, I jump in, brother. Yeah, I'll, I'll let you go. Uh, give me one second. And the thing is, you guys don't understand the global um, influence of social media. Everything that's going on, ninety percent, you guys, don't, you girls don't even see. You you don't even see the, the the what's actually happening overseas. The type of experience these guys are going through. You might catch little snippets and videos of these guys walking down the street, but you you guys don't understand the level of it's like a sport to compete for men overseas. So if you're not waking up, and this goes for ladies on the panel and the ladies listen, if you're not waking up, I can give a damn about if you have half a job and have kids. If you're not waking up, working out one to two hours a day, learning a new recipe and figuring out how you can bring more to the table, then you're not competing with the average overseas woman. I'm sorry. And that's, that's as, as crazy as that sounds, this is what you're up against because now it's real competition. This is no more Ronda down the block stuff. You've got white girls coming into the hood, snatching up your best and brightest. And that's the truth. That's why every guy who has a contract to go play for college, what do you see when they graduate? A Becky, a Rosalita, a Meeling. What you don't see, you don't see a Ronda. You don't see a Rashonda. You know why? Because when that guy was coming up, that girl was going for the obvious wrong guy. So now when things are so screwed up, you want these guys who had nothing to do with making all these babies. You want these guys with nothing to do with your mindset. Because you know what I hear a lot of women say? Oh, we're conditioned like this because the media, social media this, or hashtag you, Court Michelle, mm -hmm. I didn't know. That's your hashtag. I'm going to give that one to you. But here's the thing. If that is the case, and we're going to put so much on social media, then it should work in reverse, shouldn't it? I should be able to say, I want a submissive woman because every time I watch movies, I see a submissive woman on the screen. Yeah. I, I, I see a woman who wears her own hair yeah. and happy to do it on the screen because of social media. But see, y'all don't like it when we switch it back on you. And I'm gonna just leave it right there for right now. Well, right. I won't argue with you 1000 and I'm and amen. And